Okay. Um, oh. Let's get a little version of me up here. Okay, so welcome to MME 577 slash ME 477 slash EE 477. Um, that's how so many of you snuck into this class. There are a lot of folks in this class. The first time I taught this class, I think there were like six or eight people. So we'll see how it goes with a class size this big. But I have a plan, and that's the important thing. So uh, a little bit about the course. It's uh, an introduction to microprocessor-based measurement and control of electrical, mechanical, and electromechanical systems. So we'll talk about microprocessor architecture, computer memory, C programming, hardware and software interfaces, communications, etc., associated with embedded computing. Emphasis is placed on hardware and software interface designed for real-time measurement, control, and user interface. Okay, so uh, this course is going to give us an understanding of how to actually implement control okay, on hardware. All right, so uh, some of you have taken my controls one class. Others of you have not. Um, it's not a prerequisite for the course, but uh, it definitely will enrich your experience of this course if you've done the control systems course. Um, we'll be working with programming a, an embedded computer, a microcontroller on a board uh, with different uh, inputs, so different interfaces like a keypad, okay, and then other buttons. And then uh, we'll also be learning how to um, write out output from the microcontroller to an LCD screen and also to control mechanical systems using an amplifier and um, some actual uh, motors uh, that we'll have in the lab. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. Um, Embedded Computing Lab is housed in the Robotics Lab here. Um, and there's a very similar course to this at UW, which is where I did grad school, which is why I know how to teach this stuff. So uh, a little bit, office hours are there. I will have an office hour for one hour uh, on Wednesdays, right before this class, over in the Robotics Lab starting next week. Um, so a lot of the time that you'll spend in this class is actually going to be in the lab. Okay? We won't do a lot in here other than a few lectures, we'll spend a lot of time in the lab. Okay, um, This is the course website that we're looking at right now. It's also the syllabus for the course, so familiarize yourself with that. There will be a Moodle page probably eventually before there's anything that you need to do on Moodle. <coughs> Uh, recommended textbooks, there's the C Programming Language by uh, Carnahan and Ritchie, uh, which is a standard intro C textbook. It's a really good one. Uh, we're going to be learning C in this class. I don't assu assume that you have C, a C background, but I assume you have a programming background, that you can do some programming. Um, if you've done C Sharp or C++ or, or just C, uh, you're going to be ahead of the game because a lot of folks in here we'll be learning C as we go. I'm not going to be teaching it a lot. This isn't really a programming class per se. I would rather talk about, when, when we do lectures, I'd rather talk about the embedded computing concepts, the real-time interface concepts. Uh, but I will end up talking about C, uh, especially in the first few weeks. Um, so we'll do that. We'll have some discussions about C. And you guys will be getting a very hands-on, uh, applications-based uh, uh, introduction to C. And we'll talk about why C in one of the early lectures. So we'll get there. Great. Uh, this is a nice text for computer organization and design. 
These first couple of weeks, we'll do some of those introductory concepts of how computers work at a very fundamental level. We're going to be digging down to that fundamental level in this course. We're going to be thinking about uh, how does a computer actually work down at that, at that basic level. It's getting harder and harder to grasp that as microprocessors become more and more complex, but they have basic uh, uh, design architectures that we can at least have a pretty uh, decent understanding of conceptually. So, um, yeah. This RAL and Wormley text, those of you who have taken my System Dynamics course uh, will be familiar with that text. That will be helpful. The last three labs in this course, so there are nine total, the last three lab exercises in this course are going to include <coughs> some concepts from dynamic systems, uh, especially transfer functions, and some from control systems as well. And we'll have some discussions about them in lecture, but uh, I, we have a few folks joining us from computer science and stuff in the grad program. Um, and so, so, so a few of you might not be quite as familiar with some of those concepts, but I think we'll be okay getting through that, uh, and most of you will be pretty comfortable with that. So transfer functions we'll be dealing with in the last three of the nine labs. Um, and then the NIST control systems engineering, once again, if you took the controls one class, you'll, you'll have had an introduction to that. Okay, so uh, partial textbooks, so I'm working on these draft textbooks. Uh, that one of them is Embedded Computing for, mechan uh, for Mechanical Engineers is what the working title is right now. Um, it's available here. It, so if you click this link, it opens up this page here. And you can download the entire thing with this uh, top PDF. Uh, but I don't recommend that you do that at this point because it's going to be evolving throughout the semester. This is the second time I've gone through this course um, and things are shifting some and I'm, I'm rearranging some things. So I would recommend waiting until the day before uh, uh, we have class to print out the notes that, and I'll send out on Slack, we'll talk about Slack, um, uh, which ones are ready to print and so you can print them out and bring them to class. Um, so if you click on these, these are individual lecture files. So like today, we'll talk about computer architectures. Open this as a PDF, and you can print that out. The reason why I want you to print those out before coming is that uh, I like to, when we go through lectures, I like to have you guys um, uh, taking your own notes on top of a pretty well filled in <laughs> note set already so that you don't have to write down everything. Uh, it's hard to catch everything, and so this is a way to sort of balance that, keeping you guys engaged, taking notes. Uh, there will be some fill-in, some example problems that will work on the board, essentially, that um, you guys will be able to fill in on top of the notes. That's why I want you to print them before you come. Um, do, do print them before. So today's class, I sent it out in an email a couple hours ago, so I'm not expecting you guys to all have done it necessarily, but before we get started on those note sets, I want you guys to, to print out chapter zero, the first chapter uh, of the notes. So um, in, in the future, you know, bring them before so that uh, you guys will be successful in this. This is the schedule. Uh, it's tentative. There are some things that might shift a little bit. Uh, we have this once a week cadence, and we have two hours, and then we're going to do that for the entire semester. So it's a two credit class. I think this is probably the hardest two credits that you will ever earn in your degree. That would be my guess. Um, and it's it's weird. There aren't any there aren't any exams planned for the class. I'm like reserving the right to give an exam, but I'm like not planning any exams in the class. Um, so in some ways, it sounds like it might be pretty straightforward, pretty easy, but uh, it's pr a pretty steep learning curve getting to uh, getting your C programs to work. So you'll be spending a lot of time writing code, being in the lab trying out the code, et cetera. So I, I think it's a very worthwhile course. I think it's 
I, it's great. And you don't necessarily have to be an expert programmer coming into this course, but, but I think that, you know, recognize that you'd probably be writing quite a bit of code and you'll be doing, doing a lot of debugging. It'll take a lot of time, even though um, I encourage you to work on the labs together, uh, you'll be writing individual reports on them, so you'll be submitting your own work, uh, even if you're helping each other when you're, when you're working on these. So, yeah. Uh, so we have, we have 15 weeks in the semester, so we'll have 15 meetings of the course, and this is the first one. As you can see, I have a few things planned for today. Uh, so we'll be going through a few lectures. Most of them are relatively short. And uh, as you can probably tell, I'm recording the lectures. And I will be uploading them to YouTube. So if you miss class one day, it shouldn't be a very big deal. Just make sure you get on and watch those, those videos. Um, yeah. So. Uh, these are the topics that we're going to be covering. All these numbers, these lecture numbers, uh, correspond to that text. So um, what I might do is go back up here, pull this up. So these are the lecture numbers, so like 0 0.01, 0.02, of three, et cetera. Um, this, is, this is the numbering that, that the lectures correspond to. So yeah, that's the schedule. Um, I, a little bit of an overview of how we're going to run this. This first week, I'm going to start out with some really fundamental concepts about computing and uh, how computer architectures work. Um, and binary, because we're going to be doing a lot of things that have binary associated with them. So we'll talk about numeral systems and, and all that today, this week. And then um, this first lab exercise, that we'll, we'll go over it a little bit today in class, uh, will be due, the report will be due next Friday. We'll try Friday turning in of labs. We'll, s we'll see how that goes. Um, we we'll do it next Friday. Uh, and it's a really like it's just getting you like up and running all of the all the parts working so like you got to get you got to get the C code running it's just like a hello world essentially script uh, it's pretty straightforward so getting all the mechanics of getting the development environment set up writing the lab reports submitting them submitting your code all that stuff is ironed out in lab zero uh, which will be due next week and then we'll have, what, that's why it's called Lab Zero. It's essentially like nothing significant in terms of, of actual content, but just getting you through the paces. Yeah. Uh, so the lab reports are individual, right? Lab reports are individual. That's right. So uh, this is a little bit different than in the past. When you've been in labs, oftentimes they've been joint reports. Um, the, joint, the, the reports are actually going to be relatively s simple small reports, and we'll talk a little bit about what needs to be in them. Um, so you're not going to be having like 10 page lab reports, they'll be in like one or two pages. Yeah. Um, I know that uh, we're going to be doing a lot with the live video controllers. Yes. Stuff like that. But for assignments in lab that just have us sitting down and pumping out uh, C code, mm -hmm. uh, are we going to do that in the same room with the my real controllers, but only five so, so actually, uh, the way we're going to run the lab is we have f four stations in there with my Rio set up and the hardware. Uh, there are like 25 plus students <laughs> in this class. Um, so clearly, we can't all be in the lab at the same time working. So uh, the, the room, Panowitz, it's, so it's the robotics lab. Panowitz 107 is the lab. You can be in there whenever the building's open. You, you, you check, make sure your cards are working. If they're not working, let me know. We can get the security people to authorize your cards. Um, so you should have access to that lab. It's not quite 24-7, but it's pretty, it's pretty open. Um, there's like some hours in the middle of the night where you, you can't be in there. But uh, how these work is it's sort of an asynchronous lab work. So you'll get the exercise. We'll talk about it in class. And you guys will go in and work on it uh, individually. 
However, a lot of a lot of the code writing can be done and debugged uh, on your own computers. Okay, so you don't have to be in there working on a lab computer whenever you're writing your code. And I'm so I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can set up your own machine to be your um, development machine for the code. And when you go in there, essentially you don't even have to use the computers that are in the lab. You can just connect with USB to your machine and execute your code. It'll deploy to the MyRio and you can run it from there. So I'm going to strongly encourage you to spend time before you go into the actual lab. So once you get your development environment set up, writing the code, compiling the code, we'll talk a little bit about that, compiling the code, uh, the compiler will let you know if you have any, any significant obvious errors, um, and you will be able to do some debugging offline. Okay? Then when you go in there, hopefully you, you, know, you plug in, you can do some online debugging when you're connected to the MyRios, but hopefully that debugging is going to take less time for you. So, you know, maybe, maybe you spend three hours writing the code before you come in, and maybe it'll take you an hour to do the debugging, that, that type of thing, or whatever, however that scales. Um, that's the idea. Uh, this system, I, so the, the UW um, lab is run in a similar way. They have even more students. and. Yeah, so it's it's uh, it, it works pretty well as long as everybody um, has their own development environment, and there there are instructions in that uh, text that give you guys a way to do that installation. Um, currently, I I'm I'm working with a uh, uh, faculty who's actually currently running like a parallel version of this class at UW right now and his um, PhD student is an alum from here and so I'm talking with them a lot there is some discussion about how we can do a deployment of on your own machines of the development environment that doesn't take a lot of manual installation we're working on that I, I don't know if it'll really be online for you guys this week which is when you guys need to be working on it so the instructions are totally fine um, it you need to use windows for those instructions uh, you could use in the one that we're developing you could use Linux uh, so if you have a Mac uh, then there are, there's a discussion about using uh, VirtualBox or parallels to have a virtual machine with windows on it so yes so do you have yeah, so we'll be using Eclipse in the class. So Eclipse uh, is just one IDE, but it works for several different languages. I think it was developed for Java, but uh, you can install the C uh, tools for it, and so you can use uh, uh, Eclipse to do your debugging. And so you can set breakpoints and all that. Um, Technically, you could use any IDE you like or no IDE at all uh, if you wanted to. But it is, um, uh, I'm not going to be giving instructions for how to do that. So if you want, if you if you feel like rolling your own version of that, that is totally fine. I'll show you how to do it in, I, in Eclipse, and the instructions are using Eclipse. So, and I'll also give you guys stub lab projects that will be loaded into Eclipse so that you'll have all the lab base code there and then you can add your own code to like the main.c file etc so you guys will have a lot of the stuff pre-built for you and then you just have to fill in the actual the actual code so great okay uh, so we'll start off there get, get us going um, the first four weeks we'll be doing a new lab exercise each of the first four weeks so you know we'll talk about it, lab zero today not a lot of content in it just getting you guys going on everything um, labs uh, exercises one two and three uh, will be the next few weeks those will be a little bit more we'll be doing a lot with the keypad interface and the LCD screen 
Okay, so this is sort of uh, like an environment where your your uh, uh, product that you're going to put your embedded computer on has some user interface where you have like a keypad on it and you have an LCD screen. How do you program to interact with those two devices? So that's what the first, uh, so labs uh, uh, one, two, and three are going to be working through that material. Um, and then we'll sort of switch gears a little bit um, and we'll do parallel input output and control for uh, lab exercise four. Um, exercise five, lab exercise five, we'll do interrupts and threaded stuff uh, where we'll have multiple threads going and we'll have interrupts between the threads. So we'll talk about that. Um, notice that there are these weeks where it just says lab day. So the first three lab exercises are not as intensive, okay? It is going to be work to get going on C, but the programs that you'll be writing are relatively straightforward. Um, and the content isn't too, too crazy. Then we're going to uh, switch to these more in-depth topics like finite state machines, pulse width modulation. We'll be talking about these more advanced topics. Uh, and you'll have two weeks, essentially, to, to, to do those lab exercises. So these first four, really, if you count zero, uh, will be um, every week you'll have one due. And then we're going to slow down. It'll be every other week once we get to a little bit more advanced material. So these lab days, uh, what we'll do is we won't probably meet here at all when we'll talk about it. But we'll probably just whoever, you know, can, I'll just be hanging out in the lab. You guys can come and you know, ask me questions. And uh, as I mentioned before, every week I'll be in there for at least the hour before this class. And during my other office hours, I don't mind going over to the lab either. So I'm happy to bop over there. Leave a little sign on my door saying I'll be over there. OK. Um, then we're going to talk about how to do discrete system dynamics a little bit. So those of you who have system dynamics background, that's going to help you here a lot. Um, and uh, how to generate, how to actually um, make your embedded computer behave like a dynamic system. Okay, so how do you say, I want my controller, say you design a controller and the controller that you designed is in the form of a transfer function. How do you take that transfer function and actually put it into hardware to, to act, to behave as that transfer function <coughs> is supposed to behave? So we'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about uh, uh, DC motor velocity control. Um, in that one, we'll do a PI control. So we'll, we'll do the design as a lecture and so I'm not expecting you guys to be able to necessarily do the controller design. We'll do it in lecture, but then I want you guys to be able to take that and put it into the hardware. So go through that. Uh, and then there's another control lab, the last lab eight, where we do position control. One of them speed control, the other one's position control. Um, so we'll use two different types of controllers. We'll do the design in class and talk about how to implement them. That's kind of the outline there. Um, currently, the plan is to have you guys submit your lab reports and your C code for that week in, on Moodle. Um, I'm thinking about maybe trying another way where I can auto-grade stuff a little bit, where I can emulate the user input with another MyRio. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get that all online this time. But uh, there are going to be two homework assignments okay uh, this is all that's planned for now the first one is uh actually just a a uh, bunch of binary hexadecimal conversion stuff decimal conversion stuff uh to get you guys used to that and then the other one's a fun finite state machine problem so those are the exercises we'll do most of this is going to be the lab reports though Okay, video lectures, here's the link to the one. I, this is from the previous year, but I'll be updating that, obviously, with the new, the new lectures. Great. Uh, there are a bunch of resources there. I think that at this point, virtually everything is pulled into the 
uh, text, so probably won't be needing that, but I might point you there at some point. Okay, Slack. So my email, I'm already like 400 emails behind um, for the semester, so I'm, I'm strongly encouraging you to get on Slack. Okay, there's a Slack channel. Um, so I have this Slack, whatever it's called, group or something. You can join, and then you can sign up for this channel, and then we can have class discussion here. You can also direct message me through that. I am much more responsive on Slack because I check it every day and you don't get lost in a stack of 400 emails. So if you need to get a hold of me, that's usually the best way to do so. Okay. Grad students, so the 577 folks, three additional responsibilities. You're going to be performing a literature search to understand an aspect of each lab exercise in greater depth. Okay, so you're going to pick some topic associated with that lab exercise and then you'll, you'll do a literature search on it find some papers on it, and then as part of the uh, introduction to each lab report, um, you'll write about a page of summary of your research citing at least three uh, academic sources. Um, at the end of the semester, uh, you'll also present a detailed description of an application of embedded computing focusing on the embedded computing aspect of the application. So, you, you know, it can't be like, well, uh, embedded computers are in dishwashers, and so like talk about dishwashers um, at your presentation. You got to talk about the embedded computing aspect. So we'll have more on the on the presentation at the end. Um, last time I did this, I had you guys actually develop a new lab, but that was a lot, so I scaled that back a little bit. Um, great. So if you're in this boat, you might be wondering how to get those papers, how to do a literature search. A good place to start is this little, I mean, it's not even really a tutorial yet, it's just a few links, but um, good places to start searching for academic papers. You can go to the library, the website. You can search to the website, uh, our library, O'Grady Library. Google Scholar is good. Um, for preprints of paywalled articles, there's this browser extension, pretty nice. Uh, if you hit a paywall, sometimes there's a little thing there and it'll let you find the, uh, the preprint associated with that paper. So the preprint is usually all the same stuff, but just not in the pretty journal format. So that's nice. You can usually read all those articles for free. Um, for pirated articles, see Sci-Hub. Um, <laughs> and then there's possibly pirated articles uh, at LibGen as well. So uh, those are some good sources for finding academic articles. Um, I'm a big uh, open research proponent here, so that that's, yeah. If you have questions about it, let me know. Um, yeah. Lab policies. So we'll have Friday of the week is due. We'll have the report. It'll probably be due at midnight. I usually put the, you know, time to submit by, to midnight. Um, uh, there's going to be some requ requirements for these reports. So if you go to these requirements, um, the lab portions of this open format. So we work on the exercises. Um, but there are far fewer lab stations than students in the course, right? As you guys notice, so preparing for your time in the lab is necessary. Uh, study the appropriate material. Write the required programs before you come. Um, make sure they compile before trying them on the lab stations. That's really easy. You can just compile them. It might not actually do what you want on the MyRio, but at least it'll compile. So you don't need to wait until you get to the lab to find out if it'll compile. You can compile it ahead of time. Um, great. Code documentation. So it goes through some of the details of how to how to format your code. Yeah. Is there any way to emulate like a MyRio and like test it before you even have to like go and test some hardware? Not that I'm aware of, but if you find one, let me know. Um, yeah, I don't believe so. Um, yeah. I've had a couple people be interested in buying them before. The price on the website is crazy. It's like 500 bucks. I, I think that you can get a cheaper rate than that if you contact them as a student. But anyways, they're, they're not very cheap, unfortunately. But they are really nice pieces of hardware, so that's why they're not cheap. Um, great. 
Good. So that's just, you know, it tells you how to do the comments on there. And then here's the report stuff. And there's a, there's a, a report template. So use LaTeX. I mean, if somebody uh, feels extremely strongly about it and doesn't want to use LaTeX and does, wants to do their own version in Word or whatever, it's probably not the end of the world for this class because there's not going to be a lot of stuff in there for uh, uh, citing articles and stuff like that. So if you are a grad student, um, I strongly recommend using LaTeX if you're, so because you have to do those academic articles and all that. If you're not, uh, then it's not a big deal if you don't use LaTeX, but the, la the uh, template is there. And if you need a LaTeX tutorial, that's there too. And submission, and we'll get more into submission when that date arrives. Um, late stuff, okay? 10% per day for late stuff. But I, do, I want you guys to, uh, to complete all the labs. So even if you get behind a little bit and you complete one, I, the max late penalty is 50%. So it's always worth completing a late submission, okay? Still can boost your grade. All right, so there's that. Okay, back up here. Homework, w when they're due, they'll be due on Fridays as well. There's only two of them, like I said. Grading policies, reports, code, assignments, all together is 100% of your grade. The assignments will be treated like a lab report in your grade. So um, in some ways, those are kind of like easier points to pick up. Especially the first assignment, which is pretty easy. The second one is too. So a couple, you know, some easy points out there for those assignments. Um, so divide the number of, you know, divide it evenly into the number of assignments and lab reports. Nine lab reports and two assignments. So there are 11 things that you can get grades for. And then if you're a grad student, 10% of your grade will be on the final presentation. And as we get closer to that, we'll talk about it. Don't cheat. Uh, here's some stuff about correlation of the of the program outcomes for mechanical engineering and the uh, course outcomes and how they're how they're related. So that's the that's the syllabus. Any questions about the structure, how we're doing stuff? I think things will become more clear as we wade in. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you said for the graduate students that they form the literature search for each lab report. Does yeah. That lab zero? Uh, we'll, not on lab zero. Skip it on lab zero. There's not really much to do for lab zero. So, yeah. Skip it on lab zero. Uh, and thereafter, make sure you have that section in. Okay? All right.